If you're a fan of zombie slaying action, then look no further. This video is just for you. What's up everybody, it's Shadow Ninja here. Welcome back to Rage Quit Zombie Games. They have made their mark on the map with tons and tons and tons of additions, giving gamers unique ways to survive the apocalypse. Whether it's by plowing through the undead in Call of Duty Zombies, massacring hordes on your motorcycle in Days Gone, or assembling your plant army to defend your garden in Plants vs. Zombies. This is the genre that never seems to get old. In fact, I dove back into the zombie genre myself when I replayed in Platinum Dead Island 2 with my friends. But as I played, I couldn't help but compare it alongside another game that came out just before it. Dying Light 2 Stay Human, and even though both games share the same premise, the differences between them couldn't be any more apparent. Dying Light 2 was hyped up and highly anticipated to be the ultimate zombie game. The developers that made the first Dying Light knocked it out the park with a gritty open world, fun combat, and surprisingly a fantastic use of a new parkour mechanic giving players infinite replayability and an awesome story mode to tackle again and again with Dying Light 1. When Dying Light 2 eventually came out, it was very underwhelming to a majority of players. Slow and clunky parkour in combat, a forgettable story, lots of bugs and game-breaking glitches, and overall, the game was a slog to play through. Dying Light 2 tried to make it seem like your choices regarding the story and side quests actually mattered. The game advertised you as transforming the open world with your actions, making every decision count, but it was nowhere near as expansive or ambitious as we were told. Fast forward a little bit later, and Dead Island 2 finally comes out, absolutely smashing expectations by players who thought this game stuck in development hell for 10 years was nothing more than a cheap cash grab. With fun and gory combat, beautiful environments faithful to their real-life counterparts, and so many ways to play in a semi-open world sandbox, it was clear that Dead Island 2 was objectively a more fun way to play. Dying Light 2 and Dead Island 2 share some of the same premises, as I said before. Each protagonist you play as gets bit early on in the story, has to deal with a mutation that gives them zombie-like super abilities, and the stories just kind of take off from there, but in my personal opinion, Dead Island 2 does it so much better. Instead of being a dark, gritty, depressing story about finding your sister or whatever, Dead Island 2 embraces the apocalypse, letting the main character actually have fun in a somewhat lighthearted and campy story. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and it definitely gets a little cringy sometimes, but surprisingly, all of Dead Island 2 is strictly zombie killing fun. There's no human combat, and it was honestly such a breath of fresh air for the zombie killing to be front and center in a zombie game. Meanwhile, Dying Light 2 had you mostly fighting humans and put the Z's on the back end of the combat, as well as the story. Speaking of combat, Dead Island 2's flesh mechanic gave players interesting ways to kill zombies with a multitude of weapons, including firearms, and the gore was so realistic and smooth, I had to stop myself from kicking some poor bastard for 5 minutes just to see his jiggly parts jiggle. Damn. Each individual strike or cut you apply causes visible damage. You can cut off limbs, punch holes through their faces, break off jaws. Anything seems possible with Dead Island 2's combat. Meanwhile, Dying Light's combat was samey and repetitive, and the game originally had no gunplay or firearms until a year and a half after it came out. Even though Dying Light 2 had the one up on Dead Island with its parkour and traversal features, it didn't do much for replayability. The story, for the most part, was uninteresting and bland, the characters were kind of forgettable, and not a whole lot of people want to endure that again for a slightly different variation of the ending that they got, especially if the combat was just a dropkick simulator. Dead Island 2's campaign was short and sweet, only boasting about 20 to 30 campaign missions and a bunch of side quests to do after the story is done. It doesn't overstay its welcome, injecting new types of enemies into the world throughout the story's progress, and it leaves the player wanting more, which is where the DLCs can come into play if you want to buy them. The graphics between these two games are also not a joke. Both look incredible for the time that they release, but I still can't help but feel like Dead Island still takes the win with its gorgeous environments that stretch across several POIs, each showing off a different undead side to LA. The zombies themselves and the character models look better, they pop more, and the landscapes are colorful, but they fit the atmosphere of the game. Like I said, Dying Light 2 does not look bad either, and it has more of an open world, but it doesn't feel as lived in as the other game, or even Dying Light 1. I don't know, maybe I have a little bit of a bias because I enjoy the more arcadey and chaotic takes on zombie games, and I've played Dead Island 2 twice now, but when I went back to play Dying Light Stay Human, I couldn't get through it. I was already bored with the long ass cutscenes and exposition dumping, and even though the nighttime mechanic and parkour make it stand out from other games, it's not enough for me to invest in other playthrough in. But just like Dying Light 2's campaign, this was a short and sweet video going into detail as to why I think Dead Island 2 succeeded, where Dying Light Stay Human failed. 
Please, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you guys think that one game is better than the other, or do you like them both just the same? But regardless, I hope you guys like this video. This is going to do it for me. I am Shadow Ninja. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next one.